I hope you've all had a good Easter weekend. Um, I'm having trouble getting back in the swing of things this morning, but I have my house cleaned up and started on my work day. Hi, Sharon. Good morning. So Emily came home from school. She's um, down at um, University of Cincinnati. She's um, just finishing up her second year of grad school and will start her third and last year of um, the physical therapy program in May. So she came home Friday evening and we had dinner and just watched some TV. And the next day, she and I did some grocery shopping and met Andrea at Costco. Andrea's my older daughter who lives here in Columbus. And then we went to Andrea's house and spent the day there. John was working. Um, but after he, we spent the day outside, Andrea was teaching Emily and I how to play spike ball. And I am not athletic, so I'm sure I was more of a hindrance to Andrea be, being on her team, but, um, but it was fun. And then what did we do? Well, when John came home, we ordered pizza and watched some basketball and played games. And yesterday we all went to the zoo and then we came back to my house and just kind of chilled and relaxed for a while. And then we grilled steaks and had baked potato. And nice evening, we played a game called Amazed, um, which was fun. So it was a, a nice, nice weekend with my, my children. Um, but the day after, I always have kind of a heavy heart. Um, but, you know, I guess that's a good thing. That's a sign of love and um, appreciating the family time we have. So I hope you all had a wonderful, blessed Easter weekend or Passover, perhaps if you celebrate that, whoever you were with. A couple of reminders. Um, I have a free class to go and you just order the welcoming window bundle and you will get the class free. Um, supplies to make six cards, two of each of those three designs. If you already have the welcoming window bundle, you can simply make a purchase of $50 online or even call me um, with the correct host code. And, um, and that just reminded me, I didn't put my April host code out. But anyways, um, I can give you that. And all the information about that class um, was sent out in an email. It's also on a Facebook post. It's also um, on my blog from last week. You can find that there, stampinpeace.com. And if you need more help finding that, just let me know. Um, I also am offering a free tutorial for the Flowering Cactus Suite. And all you have to do is purchase that flowering cactus suite and I will send you the tutorial to make 13 different cards. Um, also, if you have that already and you would um, still like that free tutorial, you can just make a purchase of $70, any Stampin' Up! products, um, and I will send you that PDF tutorial free. And of course, you have the option to buy just the PDF tutorials for those as well. And my final reminder is don't forget, we are in the last month of um, last four weeks of our current annual catalog. There is a lot that is retiring in here um, and many of the items are discounted. Some are very deeply discounted. So um, you definitely want to keep track of that. Stamp sets are guaranteed, retiring stamp sets are guaranteed as long as you order them by April 23rd. After April 23rd, Stampin' Up! will cease production on the retiring stamp sets and sell just what's left then. The other products are all available while supplies last only. So if you want something that is retiring, I suggest you get it in a hurry to avoid disappointment, you want to get it while it's you see it and it's still available, especially those items that are at deep discount prices. Okay, today I'm going to um, be featuring some of the punches 
that are retiring. And we're going to make a couple of um, fun cards with those. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to use two of the punches that you may not have um, thought of before. Perhaps you have, um, in which case I would applaud you for thinking outside the box or thinking outside the punch. So let me flip my camera around now and then we'll get started on today's cards. While I'm doing that, if you would um, please share this Facebook Live, I would appreciate it very much. So I want, since I mentioned um, retiring punches, I just want to show you that very quickly. All of our circle punches are retiring. Our butterfly duet punch is retiring and is 60% off. That's only 720 and it punches both of those sizes. Our balloon bouquet is retiring. Our small bloom punch is retiring and I love this one. We're gonna be working with these three today in addition to the story label punch, uh, which I often use to focus on sentiments, but I'm going to show you a different way to use it. But anything that's marked in pink is retiring, um, retiring punch. So please take a look at that. And as I said, if you need assistance placing an order because you need to get those quickly, I would appreciate it. Um, and just call me if you need help with your orders. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you the punches we're working with. And then I have some silver foil sheets. And I will tell you, these are retiring. I have no idea. Um, I'm trying to think we're thinking, keeping two colors, gold and maybe copper. I have to double check that. But the silver foil sheets are retiring. I don't know why I use these a lot, but you might want to consider adding that to your order. But I'm going to punch the story label punch, and then I'm going to punch with the balloon bouquet punch, and then I'm going to pull out my paper snips and do some cutting here. So because I'm using the small bloom punch, you might guess that I want to make some vases. So I'm just going to snip off each side of that balloon punch. You can do as much or as little as you like, depending on the look you want, but I just want it to look like a vase sitting on a table tabletop and do the same thing here. I'm gonna make this top a little wider. So I'm gonna cut lower, cut across the bottom. You just kind of wanna make sure your lines are parallel. I think that's... And there's lots of different punches you can do this with. I'm just focusing on some that are retiring. Now here's another one you can, this gives you kind of an unusual shape. We could do something like that. Let me show you a couple others with this one. Okay. Now with this, show you two other ways you can cut this to have a little vase or bowl. You can cut the same amount off each end like that. And you can even do something that's very wide so it's more like a bowl shape than a vase shape. Trying to cut straight there. This one has kind of a, a little pedestal base, uh, base to it. So you can see, you can play around with these and do different things. 
but let's use some of these to make a card. So I've pulled out a card base of Pool Party and then I'm using the some of the In Good Taste Designer Series paper. Um, now this is very unusual because the In Good Taste Designer Series paper is actually um, going to be in our next annual catalog beginning May 4th. And that's pretty unusual for Stampin' Up! to um, bring back a designer series paper. But this is one of those mega packs, $21. I think it has 24 sheets in it. But I'm going to use this, um, what do you call that? Like plaster wall look. It's just that, a wall background. And then I'm going to use this wood grain as a tabletop. These are each five and a quarter inches wide. And then this one I made four inches high. And this tabletop one, I don't want quite that much. I'm gonna do one and a half inches. So I'm just going to adhere this so it's, it's like it's against the wall or something. And then place my vases on it this way. In fact, I might make this just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go one and a quarter inches instead. But you can play around with the sizes, um, even the different shapes of the vases using your various punches and even many of our dies will work as well. I suppose it could also be a, a shelf or a ledge. It doesn't have to be necessarily be a tabletop, does it? And then I'll adhere this to my card base. And next I'm just going to choose a few of these to use as vases. that. Maybe this one over here. I did my myself two small bunches of tulips as Easter decorations in my house. Do you ever do that by yourself flowers? It's a good, you know, that's a good healthy thing to do. I love, love doing that. Um, all right, I think I'm gonna use these three. This one I'm adhering, adhering flat. The smaller one I'm going to pop up with dimensionals. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Mary Lou and Susan. Thanks for joining me. Let's see who else is on here. Hi, Joyce and Dana. Nice to have you. I'll be giving a card away today, so if you're watching, please do um, comment so I know you're here, and that way your name will get put into the drawing for a free hand stamp card. And this one I'm also going to pop up on Dimensionals. <laughs> All right, now I need to add some flowers and I'm going with um, big bold blooms because you can see this is a little, these are a little bit large for the size vase, but that's okay because some flowers do have the large blooms. And I'm going to use this. And this, hmm, 
What do you think of that combination? Okay, I'm gonna pull this one out too because I'll need that for some greenery in my vases. So then I just am going to play with the Small Blooms Punch. Does anybody already have the Small Blooms Punch? And when I'm doing something like this, I always punch extras because it's easier for me to play with the punched pieces than to kind of guess the, um, what do I wanna say? Guess the arrangement. Joyce says she likes that color combination, wonderful. And you can use either side, you know, our designer series paper has different prints on each side. I like that brightness of that orange. And I will adhere these with many dimensionals and one mini dimensional right in the center of the small bloom is going to be perfect. You might want to lay some flat and some on dimensionals. Let them overlap. I hate to see the small bloom punch go, I really do. because It has been a favorite of mine. Okay, I have the two petal pink blooms left to add. And I'm going to show you a little trick here. I don't know if it's really a trick, but for even added dimension, adhere two together with a glue dot and you can line them up or you can um, cover up the spaces between the petals and make it a different kind of flower, whatever you think but then pull up the individual petals on that top one. And it makes a totally different flower. This one I'm gonna lay flat, just like that. You see how it looks like a completely different flower though? You could even add a third layer if you wanted to. Oh, Joyce, what a great idea. Yes, your Miss Haley could definitely do this card. And what a wonderful Mother's Day surprise that would be for her mommy. Okay, let's add some greenery. Where is the one I wanted? I'm looking for it. Here it is. I'm going to use my sprig punch. This one is returning to our catalog. And you know what? I'm gonna use a different print for my greenery. Oh wait, maybe I wanna use jade. Oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna use the jade instead. Yes, Julie, the vases are from punches. This one is from the story label punch. And then these two are done by cutting the top and bottom off of each of the balloon punches. Okay, so changed my mind from that pear pizzazz to shaded spru, no, shaded spru, um, just jade. And again, the sprig punch is going to be in our new annual catalog, but the other punches I've shown you today are retiring and are discounted as well. So you can figure out, now I don't quite like that, so I'm going to actually pull these apart and then I'll just put, oops, put some drops of glue on a couple of the leaves 
Remember, a little goes a long way. Just a drop is a lot, as my friend Jackie says. And just tuck some in there, wherever you think. You can make them longer or shorter by pulling them apart. Whoops. Oops, stick into my finger. The fun thing about this sprig punch, it punches as one, but yet you've got some uh, of the leaves curving to the left and some to the right. Tuck this one down here. So this is a very simple card that anybody can replicate. Start over. So my Emily left this morning. She left at nine, oops. And I always feel, you know, the whole mom thing kicks in. She's 24, and very responsible. I have great kids, 24 and 29. But do you still get that mom thing? I mean, I don't think that ever goes away. And I honestly think now I really understand what my mom was talking about when she said your kids are always your kids. Because, you know, I, I give Emily that, you know, I love you, be careful, no speeding, and call me when you get there. So fortunately, she, she got there just before I went, went live. I feel like I need one more right here. Just a small bit. Oh, it looks like you're enjoying this card. I'm so glad. But think of the versatility in this. You can do this with any colors, any designer series papers you have, probably with small prints, I would say. Um, but definitely just makes a, a really pretty card simply and easily. As Joyce said, um, she could do this with her young granddaughter. And think about how much fun the kids would have punching out a bunch of flowers and then just putting them together in their own combinations of pretty bouquets. Of course, we need a little bling for the center of our flowers. I'm going to pull out some different things here. Ooh. Okay, let's work with these. They don't all have to have the same center, do they? These are the pastel pearls from the Hydrangea Hill Suite. And these are returning to the annual catalog. So are these, what are these? Gold glitter enamel dots. I'm gonna put these on the yellow ones. Of course, we could mix and match colors, too. I don't know if I like that pink one in there. Hmm, not sure about that one. Maybe this light blue on the petal pink. Oh, I kind of like that. And then we have the opal rounds, which are part of that sand and sea suite. And of course, you could color these with your um, Stampin' Blends to make them even more versatile.
These are fun because um, the glitter or iridescent colors inside of them, um, they kind of make them kind of pick up the colors of whatever you're putting them on. All right, so there is one. You can see that it turned out beautiful. It was easy to make. Let your imagination run wild with it. Great for so many purposes or occasions. Mother's Day, as Joyce said, um, birthday, anniversary, a thinking of you. You don't even need a sentiment. You can just write a note. Um, what else would you use it for? Did I say thinking of you? How about just because? People are still feeling the effects and the isolation of the pandemic and missing family and friends. Um, so a just because card or, you know, just sending you a note thinking of you is always appropriate. All right, so let me show you one more card. This time, I'm going to, I won't be making vases this time, but I'm going to use the flower. Let me get this out of the way here. Okay, I'm going to um, cut off, let's say, I'm going to cut off one inch from my card front. One inch. So now this is what my card base looks like. I am going to add basic white to the inside. Again, if you want to stamp on the inside, you, I suggest that you do it before you adhere it. I'm not going to stamp it because I'm going to give both of these cards away, and this way you can put your own sentiment on it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and punch several flowers again. Whoops. Again, I like to, when I'm designing something like this or kind of designing on the fly, I like to punch extras so I can play around with the arrangement. So I did three of each. And then of course we'll add some um, greenery with it too. And look, you maybe I'll even, you know what, I'll flip these over this time. We'll use the other side with the dots, little circles. And then you're just going to start placing them on this border, this right side of your card front. And again, I'm going to use mini dimensionals, just one on the back of each. And you do want them overlapping. So just when you place it, make sure your dimensional is on the card front. That might mean, depending on how far off the edge your flower is extending, that might mean that you're not going to place your dimensional in the center, but on one of the petals instead. So this is, this is why I would do that. I well, need to scoot it over just a little bit more because we don't want it holding our card closed. But you can see that it's extended over further than the petal pink one. So just be aware of that when you're doing this. You don't want them to be lined up perfectly. You want them offset. It's even okay if they go beyond the border of the card just a tiny bit. It'll still fit in the envelope if it's just a tiny bit.
You could make them all the same color. You can vary the colors. In other words, there's no right or wrong way. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. You could adhere some flat. You could um, some flat and some on dimensionals. I'm doing mine on all dimensionals right now. Let's see, what do I have left? Oh, I think I'm gonna go with this so saffron one at the bottom. Susan says she loves her flower punch. Julie really likes the polka dot blooms. I do too, I didn't think I was going to, but I thought, you know, Mary, step outside the box. Vicki says she loves this idea. Oh, Julie, I think you're you're right. The um, quite curvy die would be beautiful for this. Now I've got a couple of these where I've got extra blooms. So I'm going to add those, make some of the flowers a double layer. And I'll just add the second one. This one's moving around a whole lot. Oh, I didn't pull the tab all the way off, that's why. Notice how I keep flipping that front flap open to make sure that I don't have any adhesive sticking over the right side. This time I'm lining up the top layer of the petals with the bottom. Whereas on this one, I offset them, offset the petals. Okay, I did not plan the spacing for these last three, but I love the way it turned out. <laughs> Just like that. Now, before I add the center of the flowers, I am going to add Deciding if I want that green or something different. Hmm. Okay, you help me out. Joyce says she really loves the second card. Just Jade, um, Granny Apple Green, or what's the other one in here? This is Soft Sea Foam. What should I use? One, two, or three. Just Jade, Granny Apple Green, Soft Sea Foam. Anybody have a preference or thought on that? Katie was the first one to respond with Granny Apple Green, so I'm gonna go with that. I think any of them would work. Um, but I thought I would, oh, there's another vote for Granny Apple Green. But I thought I would just change things up and give you some choice here. Another vote for Granny Apple Green. So I guess that tells me when you, you like to see a variety of things when I show you more than one card. Now you could easily make this make these same cards with um, some of our other punches. This is quite a bit larger. You probably would not use as many flowers if you were using this punch. Um, the other one I was going to mention, and this one is retiring, this flower border punch. You can It punches several at once, and you have several teeny tiny um, bunches. You might even put some of these small ones, tuck some of those small flowers in between the um, the bloom punches that we have here. Now again, this, it's okay for um, 
these to be extending beyond the right side of the card, but you just want to be aware of where you're putting your adhesive. So uh, like on this one, I just put the adhesive on the one leaf. Oops, and I did still get a little there. And if you have a um, adhesive remover, that'll take care of that, or even a pencil eraser. And then I'll add some more. And the ones that are extending over the right edge of that card front, I'm just putting adhesive on the one leaf that is not extending over. I'm so glad I get to do this with you. I'm, as I'm crafting, I'm thinking, oh, the house is so quiet. Does that happen to you after you've had your family here, your family home, and then it, everybody leaves? It's okay if those leaves overlap the flowers a little bit, of course. Would anybody like to win these cards? If you would, be sure to comment. Maybe just a little green at the top there will do it for me. And notice too, when I'm doing this with the leaves, I just tear it at the ends because those torn ends are going to be hidden underneath. Actually, maybe I want another one right there. Um, those torn ends are going to be hidden underneath your flowers. And that really gives your um, your card a really clean look when it's completed, if you have those torn ends hidden. Now I will clean that up a little bit with my adhesive eraser when it dries. There's just a little sticky part there. And now let's finish it off with some bling. This time I'm going to use the same bling on each of the cards and you'll see that they really, these opal rounds really pick up, whoops, pick up the colors around them. And of course you can color these opal rounds with any of your Stampin' Blends. There's two different sizes in the opal rounds. I'm using the larger size on all those. Okay, I think that's pretty. Now this card started out as being 
a, um, Dana, you noticed that too? That, oh wait, what was that? Maybe I missed something. Oh, do not stress yourself out with design. No, 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 no. Um, no. Dana, you're right. Both of those colors um, really work well with what we have. And I think the polka dot flowers actually almost appear to be lighter. They aren't, but they almost appear to be lighter because we see more of the white in the bloom than we do on the first card. Now, as I was saying, this um, card started out as being a vertical card. But look, there's nothing wrong with making it a horizontal card. So you can use it either way. I love that about this style card. And once again, I think it was Julie that mentioned the um, quite curvy dies. That too would work fabulously. Just cut it with that curvy die and run your flowers and your leaves right along that. It would be beautiful, awesome. And no, please don't, um, and I know what you mean about stressing over design because when I started, I did the very same thing, but sometimes just trust yourself. Do what I did today. Punch out more than you need. Um, cut the um, punches. Try different ways of cutting them. Remember I cut the story label punch in different ways. This was just one way I cut it and it's still, it still got the curved top, but I guess I covered up most of that. Um, and here I made more of a bowl shape. I could have cut my balloons even shorter to give it more of a bowl look than a vase. But really, honestly, the more you create, the more creative you become. And that sounds strange, but it really is true. The more you create, the more creative you become. And remember, think of it as child's play. How do ch children learn? They learn through play. That's their job, to play, to discover, to observe and do. Um, you're, we're doing the same thing by creating um, with our paper crafts. Yep, you could emboss the foil run your uh, vases, that fo the foil vases, <clears throat> excuse me, through embossing folders. That's a terrific idea. <clears throat> excuse me. So yes, but allow yourself to just play and design and move things around. And the more you do it, the more creative you become. Oh, Julie, great idea. Yes, post that at your craft table. In fact, I should make a sign and post that here in my Stamp and Peace studio. The more you create, the more creative you become. And I really, it's not just a line to me. I really believe that to be true. Um, I think about where I start. And remember too, we all start at the beginning. We all are beginners at some point. And the thing is, we keep on learning. Um, I have many people on my team that I'm learning from. I have other people, um, other demonstrators that I learn from. I have customers that share ideas from me, uh, people that share new techniques or just new ways of using products. Like I showed you with um, the balloon bouquet punch and the story label punch today different ways of using our products than they were intended for. And then, and I was never one to do that, but when I see other people doing it, it does get me to look at my some of my products a little bit differently. Up uh, Watching videos, absolutely. Katie's asking, have I received my pre-order? And am I going to share and tell us what might be your favorite of a new catalog? Katie, um, my pre I have an order coming today, which I believe is my pre-order. I did not go crazy on the pre-order, but I did order a good bit. So I will be showing that to you probably in a Facebook Live. And then I will, I cannot do a new catalog walkthrough yet though. I have to um, 
wait until it goes live to customers on May 4th. So um, I'm trying to think, I can't remember the day of the week. But on May 4th, yes, I will do a Facebook Live <clears throat> with um, doing a catalog walkthrough and show you some of my favorites, point out some interesting things. Um, and yes, and that's always fun. I look forward to doing that. So I will be sharing um, some of the products I receive because as we purchase the new products, we are allowed to share to show those if we have them in our possession and we are allowed to show any projects or things that we make with those new products. Um, but we are not allowed to show the inside of the catalog until it goes live, which is May 4th. So that will be the day of the catalog um, tour, I'll call it, or catalog walkthrough. And that's always a lot of fun. Maybe I'll have a top 10 list this time. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. I haven't thought about it yet. All right, any other questions? Great ideas. Okay, Julie's asking about, do you use the stylus on the back side? I guess that would depend. I, I suppose you could try it both sides depending on if you want it to be the design to be um, embossed or debossed. Either way, I think, would work. And Dana's saying, yes, either way would work. Okay. Have a great Monday. I hope you enjoyed this week. And please do something creative for yourself. Have a good day and watch for um, to see who the winner of these two cards will be. Take care. Bye-bye.